Hey guys, welcome to the channel IF 4.0. This is Ajay. So we will change these space values here and find out how it is going to work. So the stopping space is the space when it will be initiated when a con item stops on the conveyor and the previous item needs to stop at that distance. So on the con on the buffer I have changed to the maximum capacity to 2. So after 2 we will have a blockage started on this conveyor. You know to remember here is that the stopping space say I am entering here as 2 meters so it's 1 into len plus 2. So this means that 2 meter would be the distance between 2 items when they are going to stop but you need to remember there that the entry space and the moving space always needs to be greater than your stopping space so i am putting at 3 so i will reset i will run so if you see here the part behind will be coming after 3 meters and so it will be stopping only after 2 meters so see this part stops and the another part will come ahead some distance and then it will stop if you are going to make moving spaces 0, entry spaces 0 and you are going to reset and run, you are going to have this error which states that the moving space and the entry space must be greater than the stop space because on the conveyor you cannot pull the boxes behind, correct? That's the reason to maintain that logic as of what you need to do is you need to always change this value so if you see the flex sim automatically has updated these values to 2 so that to meet this criteria and prevent the error so always remember stopping space should be lesser than the moving space and the entry space you're going to enter the moving space and the entry space always needs to be same because it's one and the same entry space is the space created before you enter another object on the conveyor. So if you see, the another object will come after 5 meters. So this is there. It's coming after 5 meters. That is the entry space. So the object will not be loaded onto the conveyor unless we are going to have the clearance for 5 meters. This is what it indicates. Entry space, moving space, stopping space. And this is all about the conveyor behavior properties. Then we had seen about the conveyor XYZ, lens, widths, visuals, skew angles, then we have groups for the conveyors and then we have triggers for the conveyors that's on reset on masses, entry, exit and item bump. When you click on this conveyor, right click on this conveyor, we have another tab that is conveyor system properties. When you click on that, you are going to have render modes that is used for checking the rollers, belt, legs. Then you have here another tab to show your decision points. So these are all checked now. If you uncheck this, the photo eyes and the decision point which we put on the conveyor will be hidden. Then we have show transfers. Then we have show mass flow rate change points. This is used and this we will understand when we are going to understand about mass flow conveyor. Then we have decision point, draw size. Then we have propagate non-accumulating stops to straddle conveyor. Mostly we use only these points. Then we can give the colors to the photo eye when it is blocking, blocked, clearing. You can change the color here and the photo eye's color will be changed accordingly. This comes into the conveyor system properties. Then we have default visualization, default mass flow visualization, default transfer type. And there are a lot many things you can do here for default things. So default station groups is station, default photo eye group is photo eyes. You can change it as per your requirements. But these are all default. So mostly we don't change this. The parts of the items which are put onto the conveyor on or the exit transfers, entry transfers automatically go into the respective groups. And this is about general behavior for the conveyors. And then uh, we can put the triggers as per our requirement, as per the project requirement, it can be entered. So I'll just run the model. I'll remove this uh, so entry spaces and stopping points. I'll delete this. I'll make this reset. I'll run the model and you can see that the flow items moving onto the conveyor. To create 
the connection between two conveyors what you can do is there are two ways of making conveyor connections so these are two straight conveyors I'm removing this connection what we can do is either way you can connect it by a connection a port when you do this you're going to have exit transfer here you're going to have entry transfer here this way you can transfer the parts from one conveyor to another so this is one of the way you can connect to conveyors there is another way where you can connect to conveyors is you can directly drag this conveyor face to face to this and you can release it you can see you are having this one of the point here that's known as conveyor transfer point so this is basically we also have the behavior for it we also have distance along we also have transfer types so which transfer type it is and if you want to create it you can also create that so if you just drag the another conveyor and to a face to face to the this conveyor you're going to have this automatically getting conveyor connected now if you run this you will, you will see the seamless transfer from one conveyor to another so these are the two ways where you can connect the two conveyors and then you can do your modeling another thing is we are going to have the curved conveyor here so if you see the curved conveyor automatically you must understand for the straight conveyors we don't have any another properties but for the rotational or the curved conveyor we are going to have radius we are going to have start angle we are going to have sweep angle so these are the additional points which we will be seeing for the curved conveyor can curved conveyor can also be connected just by dragging it and placing it on the face of the another conveyor you will have that connection been established and you can see this is the uh, transfer point for these two conveyors and then I will take this queue to the end of this code conveyor I'll connect it via a port but if you see the direction is opposite so I'll change the direction for the conveyor and now you can see the seamless parts moving along the conveyor so I'll run this somewhat faster and this is how it will look so you can see how our parts are moving along the conveyor this is how it is going to move and transferred so as we have set up a quantity to two and not connected to the sink the flow has been restricted so I'll connect it to the sink and what I'll do is I will put the entry space here as two meters and entry space for this curved conveyor as three meters and you can see the changes taking place on this conveyor model so I'll just reset I'll run and you can see the changes so I'll take you through the closer view for the conveyor just for visualization purpose so this is how so here is the entry uh, basically entry space as 2 meters and then here we have entry space as 3 meters on the curved conveyor going outside so thanks thanks for watching this video conveyor video thanks for staying till end and watching this video till end do comment like share and subscribe to our channel let me know if you have any queries related to conveyor put it into the comment section I will address it and next video we will be bringing up for mass flow conveyor so stay tuned